Most multimeters have a maximum voltage range in DC of 1000 volts or less. I will show you how to extend that range in order to measure several thousand volts. Multimeters have an internal resistor that is calibrated along with the meter itself in such a way that if you put a voltage source of say 800 volts, the meter will read of course 800 volts. However, you can fool the meter if you put an external resistor in series. If this external resistor has the same magnitude as the resistor internal to the meter, there will be a voltage drop in the external resistor of 400 volts and the meter will only read 400 volts. Now, if the external resistor is three times the value of the internal resistor, the meter will only read 200 volts. Therefore, we see that there is a relation between the applied voltage V, the meter voltage Vm, the internal resistance of the meter Rm, and the external resistor R. This relation is given by the following formula. From this equation we see that if we want the meter voltage Vm to be, say, one tenth of the applied voltage V, then this quantity has to be one tenth. Solving this equation for R, we find that the external resistor has to be nine times the internal resistance of the meter. However, we don't know the internal resistance of the meter. I will now show you how to find it. In order to find the internal resistance of the meter, let's follow this procedure. Take a battery and measure the voltage of its terminals. It's 1.501 volts. Save this value for later use. Now take a resistor of a large value, say 1 mega ohm, and measure its resistance. It is 995 kilo ohms or 0.995 mega ohms. Now measure the voltage of the battery again, but with the resistor in series. we get a voltage of 0.751 volts. We now have the values to calculate the internal resistance of the multimeter with this formula. Plugging in the values, we get a resistance of 0.996 mega ohms, and this is the internal resistance of the meter. Since the value of the external resistor has to be 9 times the internal resistance of the multimeter, we get a value of roughly 9 mega ohms. For this, we will put 9 resistors in series, each of 1 mega ohm. It is important to use several resistors to distribute the voltage among them. One single resistor will not tolerate the high voltage. Here we have the 9 1 mega ohm resistors soldered in series. Now, take some Teflon tape and wrap it around the resistors. You have to put several layers in order to have the insulation. With the Teflon tape in place, now take some thermofit tubing of the same length as the resistor string and insert it in the resistor series. Before trying with high voltage, let's make a low voltage test. This battery has a voltage of 8.09 volts. Therefore, when we try with our probe, it should give us one tenth of that value, that is about 0.8 volts. Let's see. We now have the probe in series with the multimeter. 
and let's check the voltage and yes is 0.8 volts one tenth of the voltage of the battery you can also put the high voltage probe in one of the test leads of the multimeter for more convenience for this you have to cut the test lead solder the high voltage probe and use more heat shrink tubing to insulate the test lead As we can see, we have now the high voltage probe incorporated into one of the test leads of the multimeter and is now ready to take high voltage measurements. Now let's check the voltage of this high voltage power supply. I'm going to connect the multimeter. I'm going to turn on the supply. The multimeter reads 206 volts. That means that our real voltage is a little above 2000 volts.